Tess Sergeant, good day. Hello and welcome to Good Conversations. We're honored to have with us again today three of the young women working on the survival and revival of the Salish language. April Charlo, Crystal Kraft, and Linda Ferris all work with the Native American Teacher Training Institute here at Salish Kootenai College. The program is headed by Josh Brown, whom we hope to have on a future program. But for today, as last week, we're happy to have with us some of the worker bees with the program. <laughs> All three are developing language curricula, and all three are also teaching the language at Two Eagle River School, or Crystal, I guess you'll be starting this year. But uh, Salish is a critically endangered language, and it was named last year as one of the real hot spots on a global basis by National Geographic when it announced its endangered language initiative. Uh, the whole Pacific Northwest, in fact, was named as a hotspot, and that's home to the Salish language family, which extends from Montana all the way west to the Pacific coast. The language or dialect here in Montana, Bitterroot Salish and Pend Oreille, if it does survive, it will only do so because of the commitment and energy and efforts of young people like our guests on the program today. So welcome, and thank you for taking the time to be with us again. Um, so let's continue the conversation from last week. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the program here at SKC is one of a number of programs around the reservation. Um, uh, there's the Inclusive Immersion mm -hmm. School in our lead. There's the Culture Committee, Salish Pondery Culture Committee, uh, where I work. Um, there's the People Center. Uh, there's the Teachers in the Public Schools. There's the Kalispell Cultural Program and the efforts they're doing in curriculum development. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's the work of linguists that have worked closely with the community here for many years, Sally Thomason and, and Steve Eggestall. Um, so how does all that stuff work together or does it work together enough? Um, as far as linguists, um, I, I gotta say I haven't had much experience with it. I mean, I'm fairly new to being in like language revitalization, but we did have the opportunity to meet with Steve Eggestall the summer he actually came up and we got one day with him and I could tell you I would like to spend a week at least with him mm -hmm. and because he offered a lot of insight to the language that it just clicked with me so many mm -hmm. things and I think that I think linguists are really important mm -hmm. I think um, that might be something you know a lot of language speakers the younger generation could look into as linguists and I think it would really help the survival of the language. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I for myself, I would really like to see more work with linguists. Mm -hmm. One piece of the puzzle, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Of the right. pie. Yeah, of the pie <laughs> that you pie. mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> language so, pie. Stem yeah. squest pie in Salish. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> well, I'll put that, I'll write that one down. I'll write it down. Um, well, uh, one of the things we were talking about um, last week too a little bit is that the effort that you guys are engaged in is building off of years and years of work on mm -hmm. the reservation mm -hmm. in terms of, of developing a written system, mm -hmm. developing some curricula. I remember Clarence Woodcock, the former director of the Culture Committee, wrote Salish 1, 2, and 3 years ago for mm -hmm. the classes he taught at, at the college. Um, so it's kind of building on all this stuff, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, and do you end up, uh, I guess you work some with Lucy Vandenberg, who worked for years at the Culture Committee with, mm -hmm. with Sue P. Um, and tell us again the kind of um, daily work that you, you do at, at, at here at SKC. Well, um, we, like I mentioned last week, yeah. is that um, the, the duties change, they, sh they shift constantly. We, we do have, um, you know, a list of responsibilities. Um, mm -hmm. We are each assigned um, different things and uh, based on our strengths, mm -hmm. actually, and, and you know, because it's smart, you know, it's like if I'm good at music, why not have me do music, mm -hmm. you know? Linda's awesome at, you know, editing and, um, you know, e entering, you know, changes and recognizing, you know, what needs to be changed. And, and so that's kind of what we do is we, mm -hmm. we um, you know, try to find our, we found our strengths, I think, in the last year. And so, you know, the duties have um, included um, de developing Salish One curriculum and, uh, you know, we, like we'd have round tables, discussions of, you know, what should that look like? Mm -hmm. You know, what do we want to learn? You know, because that was huge. It wasn't like, um, it was like, what is going to benefit us is in our conversation? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how, how is this going to help us to be able to say the things that, you know, I need to say um, at, a, at a low level, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so um, 
And so we did that um, last year, and then we developed, we started the, the um, lesson plans and um, study sheets, and pre and post tests. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. We, we also, like, if we find new games on the internet or something, we'll play them with each other before we actually teach it in class. Mm -hmm. right. Just Modify to see if it's fun and right. if it's going to be, works. yeah, see if it works. Modify yeah. it with Salish see and how different ways we can use it with the language, mm -hmm. incorporating it, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. That's great. So video games, that, is that part, is oh, that what hopefully. you're talking about? No. Or? Someday. No, no. Day. <laughs> no. So, yeah, someday. No, what we're just what, like, yeah. Go ahead. Oh. What we're um, talking about when we speak of games is um, like, Oh, what's it? What's it? Like with flashcards. Like with oh. flashcards or like picture tag. Picture, yeah. Picture um, you cards. know, games that engage, you know, are physically act, um, mm -hmm. active, mm -hmm. um, help your brain work, you know, comprehension games where you really have to think, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and match the words together, mm -hmm. the statements and questions that we incorporate. Because mm -hmm. yeah, that was the thing is we didn't want to just do vocabulary, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, because that had been the base of, of, of many of our mm -hmm. instructions. Mm -hmm. yeah, our instruction was vocab. And so we were like, um, you know what's going to help us? We need to be able to say statements. We're going to we're gonna, we need to Visually, be able to, ask. to be able to visual it, visualize mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. visualize it, so we mm -hmm. have pictures to go with the vocab, and then we wanted to be able to ask questions, right. you know, about that certain topic. Because everybody, be mm -hmm. everybody learns differently. Everybody learns differently, and so Crystal, for for you as someone who's um, been a young student for a number of years. Um, what, what do you see uh, of what you're working oh, on that yeah. would really help you learn? Well, yeah, the, visu the visualizing it, like seeing it on the board or mm -hmm. just looking at the pictures, that's what really helps me. Or even just have someone keep speaking it like over and over or say, mm -hmm. like you speak it to me and like say it back to me. And that just helps me like yeah. all, learn it a lot better. Mm -hmm. Like what Subi does, she just says everything all in Salish. And mm -hmm. like, I don't understand some of the words, mm -hmm. but I'll pick up on it eventually, like, mm -hmm. just tossy yappy, she always says, tossy yappy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember at one of the language camps years ago, they had a rule where if you said an English word, you had to put a penny or a nickel or oh. something in this can in the middle. <laughs> yeah. That's and, a good uh, idea. And it actually worked pretty well. <laughs> yeah. I think John yeah. Peter Paul was the first one that put a nickel in <laughs> uh, Well, w what about, um, efforts to extend the immersion experience in Salish, um, to bring it outside just the classroom, because you know one of the things in the history of language loss here is the Jesuits in the boarding schools you know, tried to really get English kind mm -hmm. of inculcated into students, and you know, there are stories of people being punished for mm -hmm. talking English and so on, and yet it didn't really succeed in some ways. Really, the drop-off in, in Salish language fluency really happened after the reservation was opened, after there was kind of a forced immersion in English yeah. to everybody. So how do you turn that around? How do you make, how do you kind of make available an immersion experience in Salish? <laughs> we all look at each other. I don't want to answer. <laughs> yeah. I know you guys all have ideas. I know, like, I don't know. I know me and Linda are like, ah, oh. because we are really passionate about this, and we do, we do have conversations about this, is, um, in, you know, in the grand scheme of things, and, and um, you know, this is this is our funnest topic. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's like, how are we going to do this? How? And and so one of my visions, one of our visions is is, um, and this was actually one before I came in. Um, Echo, um, you know, I'd heard that there was talk of having a Salish immersion daycare because it needs to start young. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to have um, these kids immersed, and then you know to go from an, an immersion daycare to an immersion school, and then and so on. And so it, it, they have that base um, as children. Because they learn so much more when they're little, like that, when they're mm -hmm. young, like one to two. Right. They, yeah. It's for, really important to have yeah. that somewhere it, yeah. it sinks into the brain, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Right. Yeah. And for me, I think part of um, the gap, too, is um, younger generations as ourselves mm -hmm. who don't come from fluent speaking homes, we need to have parents and families really trying mm -hmm. hard to, to put it back into their homes. And so that's effort, why yeah. it's excellent where we work, you know, Native American Language Teacher Training Institute. That's a huge title, but if you think about what it says, we're training language and training teachers to, to teach it back mm -hmm. to their families and back to students. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a process, it's a definite process, but I think that part of the gap is a younger generation of people who, um, 
maybe need to take the responsibility and say, I want to put this mm -hmm. back into mm -hmm. our community. I want to put it back into our homes. We want it spoken. We want to mm -hmm. hear it and we want to see it. Because yeah. it's important, really important. Yeah, it, it, it's crucial. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Linda, one of the things that you said last week that I found interesting was that your kids are going to the Inkusum yes. school. And then you had to take classes to kind of catch up oh, with them. Yeah, and they still correct me. And I love it. I love every minute of it. I'm like, oh, okay. No, mom. I know I like how she always asks um, Ma is like, yeah, what does yeah. this mean? What is that? Is if that I, right? Yeah, if I don't know what it is, a lot of times she yeah. can correct me or. Well, she knows you know, a lot. She's very well, And then sometimes I can surprise her and be like, yeah. no, it means that. Oh, okay. Yeah. They help you know, each other. It's, it's so cool. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. It is. That's great. I mean, I, I've heard stories like that from Hawaii, where um, where the kids, you know, in the emergence program there, which is world famous, mm -hmm. uh, you know, got almost to, well, I mean, I guess they did get to a state of fluency, and the parents had to start learning right. the native yeah. Hawaiian language to catch up with them. Mm -hmm. um, and so they had to provide then full curriculum for adult learners, right. Right. which is a different thing than yeah. curriculum for kids, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And that's a, I think that's what we're finding with our curriculum. It's kind of geared more toward an older audience. I mean, it's not a daycare curriculum, yeah. like she said. I mean, right. we're not at that stage, right. which more high is nice that Inkusum's there. Inkusum's yeah. kind of taking care of the, you know, the kids, mm -hmm. and we're focusing more on adults, which mm -hmm. I think it needs to happen both. I think mm -hmm. we need children to be educated in Salish, and we need adults, because that's really the only way mm -hmm. it's going to come back. Clearly. I mean, I don't think we want to wait to see the results of the Inkusum kids. Are they really going to pass it down to their families? Right. We don't want to wait and see. We want to mm -hmm. be proactive and say, okay, well, let's pass it on to adults too. Let's get, get a leg up. You know, mm -hmm. let's have yeah. both. Mm -hmm. You know, why can't we have both? We should, you know, even, a, you know, older adults. We encourage, you know, anybody who wants mm -hmm. to bring it back. Mm -hmm. Let's jump in and do the work. So in terms of, of getting that curricula in place um, for learners at whatever level, I, I, you know, older learners that you guys are focusing on say, what are your goals? Are you going to, uh, what do you have in place at this point? What's going to be in place a year from now or two years from now? Do you, is, do you guys have a sense of that, of, of where things are going with your program? Well, I will say um, right now we're, we're finishing up. We're, we're I would almost say, 99% done with our year one. Mm -hmm. We're working towards year two and expanding on that in how um, Sophie calls it baby talk. <laughs> you know, we're still learners ourselves. Yeah. And, and so she really wants to push us further past the, mm. the baby talk, right. you know, and getting us really into the depths of Salish. And so we're working on a year two curriculum and what that will look like for adults mm -hmm. that's beyond just what we're already done, you know, yeah. and what we've already done is by far not, it's not a, it's not a vocabulary list. You know, we are doing statements and questions mm -hmm. like a April has said, but we want to push forth right. in developing a year two that's more intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the, the, from what I understand of the Kalispell curricula that they've developed down there, they're now working on year three. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, I just have a question. I mean, I think it's absolutely great what is going on with the Teacher Training Institute here, but I just have a question about um, is there a way that, that these two efforts, the Kalispell Cultural Curriculum mm -hmm. Program, which of all the other efforts seems the most similar to the effort right. you're doing, oh, yeah. since it's yeah. both mm -hmm. about curriculum yeah. development, about developing these class plans that teachers can use mm -hmm. in the classroom. Is there a way that they could work more together, do you think? I, I think that would be, um, you know, beneficial for both of us, because we kind of do. do, we kind of do work, um, you know, with them. We, be, we, we, we are in touch with JR and, mm -hmm. um, and, and the thing that, you know, like we, we saw the curriculum and um, what we wanted, you know, for Salish One is we saw that, you know, we didn't want to just work with vocabulary mm -hmm. and um, just a few um, statements and questions. We wanted, you know, and so that's how we came up is like, you know, um, you know, somewhat I spoke of last week of, of how we wanted to be able to converse. We wanted to be able to say statements and mm -hmm. negative statements and questions and, and, and be able to um, do that. And so that's kind of why ours is just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. We're not saying anything's wrong with the Cal yeah. I mean, we are Everything so... Everything adds a little. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are so grateful to, mm -hmm. to having been introduced to the Kalispell curriculum because mm -hmm. um, it, it set us off. It set the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And we were like, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, but we want to borrow, um, you know, we want to take um, what we can and, and I'll also put our 
um, our spin on it. Mm -hmm. And so we would like to see Salish Street curriculum because it could just be right up there with um, what we could be doing for a Salish 2 or Salish 3 curriculum. Mm -hmm. Great. And I think part of that is, um, I think the Kalispell are incredibly busy. Mm. You know, I mean, they lost a, their main fluent speaker and I think mm. that um, part of it is timing and scheduling mm. and making it a priority on both parties right. to meet mm. and to see, okay, this is what we're doing, this is what we have. How does that, how is that similar? What can we do to, and, and it's making programs work. I mean, they have some software yet that we don't have. Right. So it's, it's just finding the time and getting the two groups together mm -hmm on a commitment level right. and saying we're going to do this mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that's what's what that is going to take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said and we're going to take a quick break right now. Uh, we're the halfway point in our show or a little past so we're going to be back in one minute. Please don't go anywhere. We'll continue our conversation about the Salish language. In February 2009, most television stations will convert to digital transmission and no longer provide analog service. Low power, translators, and Class A stations are not required to cease analog broadcasts. For more information, call 275-4878. If you watch television on cable or satellite only, you need not do anything. If you watch free, over-the-air TV, you may need a converter box if your TV set is not digital. Set-top converter box coupons worth $40 toward the purchase of these devices can be requested by calling 888-388-2009 or visiting www.dtv2009.gov. When purchasing a set-top box, be sure it has analog pass-through if you intend to watch analog and digital stations. These devices are listed on the dtv2009.gov website. Call 275-4878 if you need assistance or information. We're continuing our conversation about the Salish language and the Native American Teacher Training Institute yes. here at SKC with uh, three of the people working on that program. And uh, be before the break, we were talking about a number of ideas of expanding the language effort. And let's talk a little bit more about how the Salish language, if kind of we dream big, um, if money was no object, if it could do anything, oh, how, yeah. to get, how to get it, yeah, I mean, it's good to imagine these things, how, how it could really be gotten out in the community more. Mm -hmm. And one of the things uh, you mentioned is daycare, mm -hmm. and Crystal, I understand you did a bit of thinking yeah. and imagining on that yourself. Yes, um, the, f the whole reason why I came to college here at SKC was to take business management and then I was going to take early child education because I wanted to start a daycare. Mm -hmm. A daycare, what, um, what teaches Salish mm -hmm. and other things, you know, just because kids, when they're that small, they just, they learn so much. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to teach them because they just, you know. They're little sponges. Yeah, they just, yeah, they just <laughs> soak everything up. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I have the business plan and the marketing plan. It's just, yeah, the money situation. Mm -hmm. And plus, I got to learn more Salish myself. Mm -hmm. But... So if money was no object, what would you imagine oh, uh, as being the I best would, thing for that? I'd probably have a daycare here in Pablo. Mm -hmm. um, somewhere, I don't know, probably not really close to town, but somewhere like like a little bit away. So there's like nature involved where we can like go outside and you could teach them stuff about like around mm -hmm. the house and mm -hmm. Um, just teach them stuff that has to do with outside, like animals, and mm -hmm. I don't know. It just it would just be fun. And those things are integral to the culture, too, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Cultural things. Mm -hmm. Great idea. He, yeah. He did yeah. mention um, if money was no object, mm -hmm. and that that always seems to be a hindrance on mm -hmm. some of the revitalization, mm -hmm. and it's really sad. Um, if money was no object. I think we would all vote for paying our fluent speakers. Mm -hmm. They yeah. should be, our teachers should be top paid. Yeah. And I think that would be a huge factor in revitalizing it. I think um, funding really needs to be out there for a language. We need, yes. really need to put priority on, should be you know, maintaining um, a strong community mm -hmm. and contributing factors to that, our language and culture. And so therefore, if we want a strong community, we need to really promote and put our 
our money where our mouth is and say yeah. this is strong this is something we want to promote in our community we want a strong healthy Indian community and to get that we need language and culture mm -hmm. I mean I sometimes think we're spending several billion dollars a week on this war yeah right and, uh, yeah. makes just, no sense you know, in, in two days of that funding think of what you could uh, do with yeah it. Right. seriously <laughs> Is it my turn? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's always all of your turn, so jump in wherever you want. Yeah. So I love this question. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a nice surprise question. All yeah. these questions weren't pre-asked. Right. <laughs> okay. We weren't prepped. We were prepped. So yeah, no, this is an awesome question because, um, and, and this is a tough thing about this, is, is that, you know, we, we all have to work for a living. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if, if I'm sure if, if half this reservation was paid to, you know, help revitalize this language, I'm sure we would see a huge surge. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was in Oklahoma, if, if um, you know, and I always had that strong um, bond to the language, but it wasn't until I found out that I could get paid mm -hmm. to help revitalize the language. And I'm like, okay, I will come home. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and same thing with like Linda, you know, like it was a passion of hers, but mm -hmm. she had, you know, she had to work for a living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and she's um, got kids to. Yeah. yeah. Right. And one of the things, too, is, is um, this relates to the other question about, um, y you know, how are we going to help the language, you know, survive with the money? Um, what we need to see is. Um, revitalization um, within families mm -hmm. you know because this is the thing is like we all have separate um, families and it's awesome that Linda has the opportunity to have kids who are in the program because she can go home and she can speak to her children mm -hmm. yeah um, you know me I, I don't have that um, and so what we really need to see is we we need to see funding going towards um, families yeah. revitalizing the language within families because who do you spend your time with the most right. who are you going to be speaking to the most right. Um, so how do you imagine that, that working? I mean, in say there was billions of dollars to spend, what would you what would you do? Oh, this would be so awesome. Music. <laughs> yeah, movies. We would all be music and movies <laughs> and rainbows. Flowers. And we flowers. would have parent classes. Yeah. Well, what while. I would like to see is 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 how successful our program has been, mm -hmm. um, because in order to revitalize the language, we need teachers. Mm -hmm. We need mm -hmm. lots of teachers. More teachers. Um, teachers, you know, like within our program, um, and I would like to. To see um, our program expand to a whole nother level, which would include these families coming in, you know, getting paid to basically do what we're Every doing. Because town. ownership, you know, to have this feeling of revitalizing the language and to have the ownership of like, this is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, I belong to this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and then, you know, like maybe perhaps those families going within their family and teaching their family, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I have a niece who I completely immerse when I'm with her. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I try not to speak any um, Salish at all. But then she goes back to English. 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 Oh! <laughs> English. <laughs> I'm so excited right now. Um, and she goes back to her, you know, to her mom, you know, my sister, and she doesn't get that reinforcement at home. So we need the reinforcement yeah. at home within the families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's a really interesting thought. And, and uh, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask, too, is how do you see the language as being crucial to uh, understanding the culture? I mean, if if people learn the culture but only in English, what kind of things are they missing? Good question. Do you want to touch on that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, um, and this was one of the things that our program, um, Josh Brown has made a huge commitment, not just to the language, but to also um, enhancing our knowledge of, of culture. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have participated in, um, we try to participate in every single cultural activity that is offered on this reservation. Mm -hmm. We spend a lot of time at the People Center. Um, we've, we've, um, Can I speak? We, we did the camas week, we went out and did camas. You know, and that's the sad thing is that, you know, because people have to work for a living, mm -hmm. we were almost the only ones out there, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's showing that money makes a difference with right. all this stuff. And we just need support. We have a huge mm -hmm. It number. sucks that it's like that, but it is. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a huge number of, of employees that work for, um, you know, um, you know, who work across the, st the street. Yeah. And um, I would like to see an importance on it. It needs mm -hmm. to come from the top. We have, mm -hmm. um, you know, how many um, Salish employees we have over there. Mm -hmm. um, it, we, it just needs to be supported better, right. you know, and it needs to come from the top and yeah. saying this is important mm -hmm. and this is how, you know, Tribal we're going to help you yeah. 
you know, because a lot of the things is, is, is people couldn't come because they had obligations to their job mm -hmm. and that they felt they, they couldn't leave. Mm -hmm. I had a thought. Um, you ta we were talking about how language and culture, what the differences are, mm -hmm. you know, your question. Basically, what I was thinking is, you know, in Salish language, you know, words just don't mean, you know, this is water or, or land means land. There, yeah. There's more to the word than just what it seems yeah. in English. And so it's a perspective. It's mm -hmm. a way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, that's why immersion is important. Mm -hmm. Because if you get Salish translation, it doesn't always match up. Yeah. And, and it's a hard way. It's a, you're wanting people to think in Salish. Mm -hmm. And that's really tough yeah. when you come from um, your first language being English, mm -hmm. and that's why it's important to pay those Salish teachers. You know, they're mm -hmm. the ones who can say, "This doesn't just mean land. Mm -hmm. This means good, yeah. good land." Or this means, you know, today, right now. It doesn't mean just today. It means, you know, we're right now. Or, mm -hmm. you know, the translations. It's, you know, I'm not a linguist, so I can't really, you know, go as, you know, in depth on what I'm trying to say. But it's a, it's a perspective. The mm -hmm. Salish had a perspective perspective on the way they saw the world. And so yeah. teaching culture and language, it, it touches in and on if that. You, if you know that more, then you understand the words better, I think. And it changes your if way you know of thinking. More of the culture. Your well, world view. And our culture is part of us. Yeah. yeah. It's part of, you know, who we the are. Salish people. It's who we are. Mm -hmm. We need it as, in conjunction with Salish. Yeah. Well said, and a good concluding statement. It's gone so by so fast. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say we're out of time. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to our viewers, uh, we'll post on this program the website. Uh, do you have a website? No, it's we'll, under construction. Okay, it's under construction. We'll post <laughs> an email address for you to contact the Native American Teacher Training Institute. We hope our viewers will themselves engage more with the Salish language and that this only grows in the future. In the meantime, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time.